Hi, my name is Akiva Goldman. I'm the director and founder of Goldman and Associates. Uh, we have a primary focus on family law. Please subscribe to our channel. One of our uh, members of our viewing audience asks uh, if we could just give a brief overview of the divorce process in general. You know, I think we have over 600 videos, and I think we have covered this in perhaps bits and pieces as we talk about service on one guy, the friend of the court, discovery in a case. But why don't we quickly uh, take a, a thumbnail sketch and do the whole process here. And that's the purpose of this video. So the divorce is going to start out with the filing of a summons and complaint for divorce. It's going to be filed in the county where one of the parties resided for enough time to be able to file in that county. you got to live in the state of Michigan for at least 180 days and in the county where you file for at least 10 days prior to filing. So if you live in, for example, uh, Wayne County most of your life, but a month ago you moved to Oak Park, so now in Oakland County, you may file in Oak Park, and that's how that works. Once your case is filed with the court, it is randomly assigned by the court clerk to one of the family court judges. That judge will then issue a summons, which is essentially an order to take action. The summons will issue directly through the court clerk, but it'll be stamped with the judge's name, it'll be uh, sealed and ready to go, it'll have a certain amount of date, uh, a certain amount of time uh, dated by which a person must serve that summons and complaint. So you'll get a summons, you'll get the complaint, it'll go back to the law firm, and the law firm then has to serve it on the other side. By service, I mean you gotta get it to them somehow, either by a bailiff or a court officer or some functionary or sometimes by certified mail, somehow you got to get those papers into the hands of the other side so they can know what's going on. They're being sued. They need to respond. They have a limited amount of time to respond. If you serve them in Michigan, Michigan case got 21 days. 21 days during which they can do something about it. And during those 21 days, you know what they do? They hire a law firm to represent their interests. And that law firm then files an answer. And once the court has a summons and complaint and answers from both sides, the court then sets up sort of a calendaring of events. It sets up a schedule through a scheduling order telling the parties by such and such date you have to accomplish A, B, and C. Uh, you may have a discovery cutoff date, a motion cutoff date. The court may set up a status conference to find out what's going on in the case. The court may set up a settlement conference. There may be a trial schedule already set up. In most cases, though, the court won't even talk about a trial set up until way later on down the road. Um, it's very uh, popular for the court right off the bat, particularly in Oakland County, uh, when you file that the court will set up an early intervention conference to acquaint the parties with the workings of the friend of the court and all that, and, and, and to sort of find out what's in dispute and then focus the attention in the case on those items which are in dispute, put aside the ones that we agree on, and in that way hopefully bring the case to a, a resolution. During the process, the attorneys have the opportunity to engage in discovery. Discovery means they get to check things out and find out what the value of the marital estate is. Is there a home? What's the value of the home? Are, are there rental properties? Is there a business? Is there a golf course? What, if, are there debts? What are the value of the debts? Do we owe Visa, MasterCard, IRS, medical bills, anything like this? Do we have these things? And on the flip side, is there another house? Is there a 401k? Is there an IRA? Are there uh, stocks and bonds, money in the bank? All of these things. You check out during the discovery so we can figure out what's in the marital estate. Once we figure it out, then the attorneys go about the business of trying to figure out a little bit in the way of horse trading to try and make it fair. You keep this, I'll keep this. If there's $50,000 in the marital home, it's $25,000 a piece in value that we have to divide. Now, if you're keeping the whole house, that means you owe me $25,000. How are we going to make that up? So we may look at other assets to balance it out. The goal at the end of the day is as best we can, we try and make it equal. It has to be fair. Fair doesn't necessarily mean equal. Sometimes the court will look at equity versus equality. The court will say, well, it's not exactly equal, but it's more fair to do it this way for a whole host of reasons that are beyond the scope of this particular video. Um, the point is that if the parties can work it out, they do and they draft a proposed judgment of divorce, they notify the court that they have a settlement, they go into the court either in person or by virtual attendance, and they put the settlement on the record and they get it approved. Now, if they can't get it approved, because they can't settle the case, if they don't have an agreement, then the court will often take uh, methods of alternative dispute resolution and implement that. The court may send the parties to a mediator. It could be more than once. It could be several times. And the court can try to get the parties closer and closer together. The truth of the matter is that very few people emerge from a divorce and everybody's happy. 
in most cases, if people did their job right, both parties are miserable. Each one feels that they got ripped off. If both parties feel that they got ripped off, something's going right. Because if this guy feels he gave too much, and this one feels he gave up too much, under these circumstances, you probably have what's fair. The parties to the divorce very often, because of feelings of spite, um, you know, feelings that they've been slighted, feelings of insult, feelings of embarrassment, they're not exactly equipped to determine the fairness of a settlement, but the attorneys help, uh, the judge helps, and hopefully over time the parties will come to realize that what the court said was fair actually was. The court doesn't get it right all the time. Most of the time, though, they do. Um, and that's basically the life cycle of a divorce case. If you can't work it out, by the way, the court will set up a trial date. If all else fails, the court will try the case, and the court will determine who gets what. Who gets what could impact custody, parenting time, child support, alimony, property settlement, asset division, debt allocation, all these things. The court will figure it out. The court, though, you have to understand certain things. Um, never approach this thinking it's going to go 100% your way because it never does. Sometimes the court comes up with a solution nobody even ever anticipated. So you've got to realize that the court really doesn't want to be involved in your personal life. It's only involved in it because you bring the court in by filing that complaint for divorce. It would behoove you to try and work it out because you will find that even if you have to begrudgingly accept some sort of resolution, it's preferred to having some guy in a black robe say, you shall do this, you shall do that, and all of a sudden you've lost complete control of where that case is going. So, um, obviously, uh, you got to try and work it out. If not, the court will conduct a trial, just like you see on TV. It'll hear evidence, it'll hear testimony, it'll, witnesses will be called, all of that, and then the court will render its decision. That's basically the life cycle of a divorce case. If you have any questions about that, reach out. We'll be glad to help you out.